What's up, comic book fans? My name is Bruce Moreau, and welcome to the channel. And I'd also like to welcome you all to the very first episode of Comic Book Reviews, a weekly series where I will be reviewing the books that I picked up last week at my local comic book shop. Last week being March 27, 2019. Now, before I jump into the reviews, I would like to give you guys a quick breakdown of how I will be reviewing each book. Um, I will start off with giving you guys the name of the book, the number of the book, and I'll tell you what my thoughts on the story, my thoughts on the art, my, my overall review for the book, and um, also let you guys know if this is a good jumping on point for the book. This is important because I will be reviewing single issue books mainly. Um, and so it's kind of important for me to let you guys know if this is actually a good number for you guys to jump in or maybe if you guys need to go back and pick up maybe the previous one, two, or three issues. All right, so let's talk about the books that will be reviewed in this episode. I'll be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man 18, X-Force number 5, Doctor Strange number 12, Daredevil number 3, Heroes in Crisis number 7, Shazam number four, and Detective Comics 1000. All right guys, let's kick off these reviews. First up, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 18. This is part two of the Hunted storyline. This is written by Nick Spencer and art by Umberto Ramos. So what did I think of the story? Overall, I think the story was excellent in this issue. Um, the dialogue was excellent. The pacing of the story was excellent throughout the whole entire book. Um, he, Nick Spencer is actually finally, in my opinion, hitting the groove within his run on Spider-Man. Um, he started back on issue one. Um, before that, Dan, Dan Slott wrote it for like 10 years. So yeah, this is actually a great, great issue. I don't want to get too much into the story, um, but the story was excellent. Um, the art by Umberto Ramos was amazing. I'll have B-roll throughout um, this review of um, the book, but it's actually amazing. His pencils are amazing. The way he brings across the emotion and the the expressions on all their faces is just so great. And there's so many villains and heroes and and robots and everything in this in this book. And he does such a great job. He nails it. He elevates the story, um, which is always a great when artists can do that. Um, so what is my overall review in the book? Um, for sure, this book is a solid, solid book. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anyone um, who is interested in Spider-Man. I would definitely suggest going back and picking up issue 16 or 17, um, so that way you have the whole hunted, hunted storyline. But this is a great, great book. Um, is this a jumping on point for the book? This issue itself is not a jumping on point. I would definitely go back and at least pick up issue 17, like I said. Um, but yeah, I would definitely uh, go back and pick up those, these two issues. They're a great, great read. All right, next up we have X-Force number five. This is written by Ed Brisson and art by Damien Curacao. Curacao, and I apologize. I'm probably gonna butcher so many names in this in this series, but I will get better, I promise. Um, all right, so what did I think of the story? Overall, I think this is a good story if you have read the previous four issues. If you haven't read the previous four issues, I'm not sure. If this is gonna make much sense to you, but um, if you have read those four issues, this is actually a really good story. It has good pacing, it has good dialogue. Um, we're getting the backstory of um, Kid Cable um, and why he has um, jumped from the future to the past and killed his, uh, spoiler alert, his older self and taken his place. So overall, I think it's a really good, good story. What do you think of the art? Um, I actually really enjoyed this guest artist, Damien uh, Curacao. Again, I have no idea if that's pronounced correctly or wrong, um, but um, it's actually, he's, he has a much more realistic feel or uh, look to his art, which I think fits X-Force much better than the previous artist, which is Dylan Burnett. Dylan Burnett's just much more stylized look to all of his characters, the much more um, just angular, and they just don't have that realistic um, look to them. Um, so I'm actually, I actually really enjoyed um, the art in this issue. Um, so what's my overall review for the book? Um, so I have, I, I have liked this book. This is, I'm, I'm going to continue picking this book up, but I don't love it. Um, I try, I tend to compare um, all X Force books to Rick Remender's um, 2012 run on the book, which I absolutely lo love. I think that is just the pinnacle of what X Force, X Force should be. 
Um, but all that said, I am going to continue picking this book up. And I actually really like this um, this team, and I really like that Boom Boom is on it, and Domino, and Deathlock, and I actually really like the way Ed Brisson is writing Deathlock. It's like the right amount of com um, comedy in it. It's just, it actually is uh, a pretty good book. So I would recommend, recommend um, people pick this up. Is this a good jumping on point? That, I'm not sure if this issue is a good jumping point on, um, for the book. I think maybe the next issue, issue six, would be a better jumping on point than this one. All right, next up we have Doctor Strange number 12. This is written by Barry Kitson and Mark Wade, um, and art by Scott Kolbish. Um, so what did I think of the story? Um, this is the start of a new arc um, called Herald Supreme, and so far <laughs> I would say that this issue is a weak issue compared to the previous 11. Um, it just, the dialogue wasn't super strong, the, the pacing was kind of, I don't know, weak. It just, it wasn't a super strong book. I didn't love the characters in it. Um, I mean, mainly there's Doctor Strange, which I love, but then they introduced this new alien character and he wasn't very interesting. I think the dialogue between Doctor Strange and him were very forced. The story seemed to kind of just move at a weird pace. Um, it just, the story overall was just kind of weak um, to me. Now, what do I think about the art? Now, the art, again, by Scott Kolbish, Cobbish, Cob Cobblish, um, it just, again, it just, it didn't add much to the story. It, it was, his lines are overall kind of thick and, the, and not very descriptive, I guess you could say. It just wasn't very detailed and, and overall it seemed very muted and I don't know, I just, I didn't think it added much to the story. It kind of actually kind of distracted from the story, which is a, a bad thing for a book overall. Um, so what's my overall review for the book? Overall, as a single issue, this is not a great issue. Um, am I interested to see where it's, where it's going because it has Galactus in it? Yes, 100%. I'm definitely going to continue picking this book up, because mainly because I'm a big Doc, um, Doctor Strange fan. Um, is this a good jumping on point? Yes, 100%. Um, this is, like I said, at the start of a new arc. If you are interested in getting into Doctor Strange, this is a good jumping in point. Was this a good book? Not so much. I probably wouldn't recommend that you pick this book up. If I was going to re recommend you jumping into Doctor Strange, I would go all the way back to Jason Aaron's run, um, in which you can pick up a trade now. That run was excellent. And the art in that, oh, so beautiful. All right, next, we have, next up we have Daredevil number three, written by Chip Sardisky and art by Marco Chichetto. Um, So what did I think of the story? This story is excellent. I absolutely love what Chip is doing in, in, with Daredevil. Um, his run has been super solid so far. Yes, we're only three issues in, but each issue has been excellent. Um, I'm really enjoying this new character that he added in. Um, his name is Cole. I couldn't find his last name. I'm sure if I went back to the previous issue, if they said it, but he's this um, cop that transferred in from Chicago. Um, he seems to have some beef with Daredevil and any cop that is supporting Daredevil or vigilantes in general. Um, he seems like a really hard ass and he's a, he's a great character. Um, and yeah, it's a great, great story. The art, oh my God, the art, what it, Marco is absolutely crushing it. This is a great artist who is completely elevating Chip's story. The line work is gorgeous. He has a certain amount of detail, but a certain amount of also grittiness that is absolutely perfect for Daredevil. The art in this book, I can't say enough about it. It is so good. I'll make sure I have B-roll showing you guys the art in this book. It is so, so good. I love, love what Marco is doing. Uh, my overall review, I can't say, I, I think what I've said so far is enough. This book is excellent. I would highly, highly recommend anyone who is thinking about picking up Daredevil, Daredevil to pick up this book. Um, is this a good jumping on point? Um, this issue specifically, no. I would definitely go back and pick up the previous two issues, but since this is only issue three, it's easy to go pick up those two issues. They'll still be on the shelves. Um, so yeah, this is a great, great book. I highly, highly recommend anyone um, interested in Daredevil to pick this book up. 
All right, our first DC book, we have Heroes in Crisis number seven, written by Tom King and artist um, Clayman, Travis Moore, and um, Jorge Fornes. All right, so what did I think of the story? Overall, I love Tom King. His work on Mr. Miracle was excellent. The story in this book is really, really good. Um, but this being a miniseries, I think overall as the miniseries, the mini miniseries is moving really, really slow. And it's hard to, to follow because it is moving so slow. Um, I will say the dialogue in this book is excellent. Tom King is such a good writer. Um, the, com the dialogue between um, Booster Gold and Harley Quinn is excellent. I really, really enjoyed Batman and the Flash's dialogue together. That was so good. Um, I actually went in the, after I read this book, I read this book, um, I think like a Wednesday night when it came out and I had to go in and tell my Frank, uh, my friend Frank all about the dialogue between Frank and the Flash because it was just so funny. It was so good. Um, so yeah, the story is good in this book. Uh, what I think about the art. The art in this book is also so, so good. The three artists in this book are absolutely crushing it. Um, sometimes when you see multiple artists in one book, it can actually distract from the story, but this is, doesn't distract from the story at all. It definitely help, like elevates the story. Like I said in the previous, like the Daredevil book, it just, it brings the story up. It, it, it makes it so much more enjoyable. Um, so what's my overall review for the book? Like I said, the, the story is moving so slow, it's hard for me to really enjoy the book. I think this is gonna be a book that everyone will enjoy much more once it's actually in a trade paperback and you can consume it all at once. But as it's coming out weekly, I just, I'm not, I definitely can't recommend anyone pick up this book unless you've picked up the previous, like, you know, six issues. Um, is this a good jump on point? Uh, um, obviously no, because it's issue seven of a nine issue uh, miniseries. Um, so yeah, it's not a good jumping on point. Wait for the trade. All right, next up we have Shazam number four. Um, this is written by Jeff Johns and art, uh, art by Dale Eaglesham and Marco Stantucci. Um, what do I think of the story? So we're four issues into Jeff John's run, and what Jeff John is really known for is he takes a character and expands their mythos, their backgrounds, like um, where they started from and, and, and just their history. And that's what he's doing here with Shazam. Um, he, and he's doing a good job of, job of it, but I'm just having a hard time connect with connecting with it because the story just seems it's dealing with a lot of child characters and it just feels very childlike and it's and it's not i don't know i'm just not resonating with the story itself the dialogue is good and it's telling a good story it's just i'm not connecting with what's happening and i think that's what i'm struggling with it's a good story it's just i don't know i'm not i'm not personally loving it the artwork the artwork is great it's it's it has some beautiful art um it's in the, some of the layouts has tons of characters and, and buildings and it's beautiful. It's just, I think it comes back to the story where there's lots of like just kids and carnivals and I don't know, I'm just not super, super loving it. But that said, my overall review for the book, it is good and I'm going to stick it out. It's just... I don't know if I could recommend it for people who are not interested in Shazam or maybe they haven't re read Jeff John's previous work only because I'm sticking with it because I know Jeff John's. It, there is going to be a point where this story turns around and it's going to be excellent. I just, it's just not right now. So um, yeah, that's my overall review. This is a good jumping on point. Since this is only issue four, it's easy to go back and pick up the previous three issues and then you're totally caught up. So this is not a good um jumping on point but like i said this is only issue four go back and pick up the previous three issues if you're interested in shazam and you might be because the movie's coming out um april 5th which is actually two days from now um which will probably be out the day i release this video all right next up we got detective comics 1000 i cannot believe we're at 1000 for detective comics it's just so great um i think I believe this is the second book um to hit 1000 i think the first was action comics and it's also so cool because this is the 80th anniversary for Batman. He's 80 years old. Um, it's just, it was so cool. Um, 
I'm not going to go over the, the bullet points I did for the other books, mainly because with big milestone issues like this for books, um, they're not really like arc driven. They usually bring in a lot of um, big writers and artists that have written for um, the character in the past and have them write little mini stories. And that, that's exactly what this did. We have 10 little mini stories um, for Batman and they're mostly fun. I wouldn't say they're great. But um, some of the art is beautiful. I have B-roll um, flipping through the whole book. And there's a little, the, the very last story by Peter Sami um, will be the new villain moving forward, Arkham Knight, uh, which is from the, actually the Batman video games, um, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it was a fun issue. I wouldn't recommend it picking it up unless you are a collector. I mean, this book was $10, which is insane for a book, but it's also super thick. Like I said, you get 10 short stories in here. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Like I said, I wouldn't pick it up unless you're a collector. All right, that's gonna do for it, do it for this episode. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're interested in seeing future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button with a little bell notification to get notified when I post new videos. I will have a review of Shazam coming up. Um, hopefully Monday or Tuesday, because I'm gonna go see it on Sunday. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are really enjoying this content. I really look forward to posting new videos for you guys. Um, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.